Yo, Counterattack Podcast with myself, Daps. Guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff. Listen, obviously I put out a video earlier on today that you guys watched. So now I'm, I'm in the same outfit, but it's the same day. This is just in the evening. So that's why. But um, yeah, um, this is going to be literally quick, maybe even five minutes. We had a couple Europe, Europa League or Europa League and Conference League games today. I want to talk about Victor Osimhen. So Tottenham had a game against Galatasaray away. And do you know what? I know it was like a shuffled, you know, team. Let's say Solanke was arrested. Madison was captain. Romero was out. Van der Ven was out. Davis was centre back with Jagerson. Um, who else was missing? Bentacore didn't start. Saar wasn't there. So yeah, it was a shuffled team. I think I saw um, Archie... Is it Archie Gray? Yeah. Um, but, <coughs> you know, Galatasaray more or less had, you know, their first their first team out. And I thought it was going to be an interesting game. I think, though, I think what... Tottenham just looked like they were all over the place, honestly. I know the game ended 3-2, but it could have been way more than that. And Osimhen had a couple chances. Victor Osimhen had a couple chances and... Um, I think there was one, a uh, couple good saves. Yeah, do you know what? He got two goals, but I think he probably should have had three. But what I do want to say about Victor Osimhen is that I think a lot of people might have looked at all the clubs he could have gone to and he's gone to Galatasaray, no disrespect to Galatasaray. And maybe they thought, ah, oh, that's his level. But this guy is a bagsman. This guy will always get chances. He's always going to be a threat. And if he's doing this with Galatasaray against Tottenham, I honestly believe that a better team, he's going to get even more chances. He's going to, you know, really show what he can he can do on a on a on a world world level. And you know, um, I just think people are kind of forgetting that Victor Osman is still there. Do you get what I'm saying? And I know he's gone to Turkey, and I know it was like a big saga. But when we're looking at strikers in world football. Victor Osman is, is still top five strikers. I'm not going to rank them. I'm not going to list them. But I don't think you can name me five strikers better than Victor Osman in the world. No. And strikers right now are at a premium. And, you know, I think when you see him yesterday in the form that he's in, and I don't even think that I was even the best Victor Osman. And he got two goals and was always a threat. I don't even think that's the best Victor Osman. I feel like he was probably playing at like 50, 60% yesterday. Um... Or I say, I say yesterday, but today. Um, I, I just think that it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, what happens with Victor Osterman. Because I know there's going to be a few clubs sniffing around, you know, trying to see if they can get him out in, in January. But I don't feel like, I feel like the Victor Osterman saga is far from over. I feel like seeing him do what he did against Tottenham, it's one thing scoring goals in the Turkish league, but then when you do it in Europe, yes, it's in Europa League, but you're doing it against Tottenham, the eyes are going to be there. They're going to see that, you know, he got two goals, maybe should have had three. You know, it's going to be very interesting. Like I said, he's still top five strikers in the world. It don't matter where he's playing. If he's on the pitch, you've got you've got a chance of, of beating whoever the opposition is because he is that good of a striker. Um... So yeah, what do you guys think about that? What do you think of Tottenham's performance? It was just weird. And I know it ended 3-2. They had a player sent off. Um, the young boy. Let me see what his name was again. The young boy that actually scored. Um, Lakes. I think it's Lake Seaf, Lake, Lake Shield or something. Sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting the name. But I think though... It was a bit of 100% naivety and immaturity that got him sent off, 100%. He's on a yellow card and he literally looked like he forgot and, that was his, and he was making that challenge as if he's not on a yellow card. So, um, but, you know, I know it was a shuffle team as well, but they were just all over the place. There were gaps and you could just see Poch uh, Pochettino. You could just see um, Postacoglu, Postacoglu and Postacoglu, yeah. Why's my mind going, going blank right now? You could just see how he was just looking, just shaking his head, thinking, what is all of this? Do you know what I'm saying? They were all over the place, man. And, 
you know, and in Europe, I think we saw, like I said, with Arsenal, Man City, you've got to be switched on. You've got to be switched on in Europe. You know, you can't get away with, with sub subpar performances. And um, yeah, it was just... Yeah, that, I think that's the main thing I, I did want to say. It's funny because Fen- um, Fen- um, Fen- Galatasaray actually have quite a few players who are like known. Mertens, it's like Turkey's a place to go to, not when you're ready to retire, but when you when you know you're not playing at that elite level anymore and you still want a big team, you go to Turkey and you play for the, the, the top teams there. So we're talking about Mertens. Um, Ziyech came off the bench, obviously. Osman. Osman is very much a different part because we know why he's there, how he ended up there, and I don't think he, that's his last stop. Um, Lucas Torreira is there. Um, Sanchez, um, the old Tottenham centre back, is there. So it's interesting to see the amount of players that are that are there and and doing well. Icardi is there. So um, yeah, I was I was just I was impressed with Galatasaray. I felt like. Tottenham made it made it easier for them because Tottenham really I know it finished three two but I feel like that scoreline kind of flattened them. Um, no, 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 I feel like they they kind of were lucky to get to get the um, to get three two because it could have been worse than that. But um, Chelsea uh, last time I saw the score was six 0 at half time. Um, I was watching the Manchester United match where Ahmad Ahmad scored. So let me see. The final score for Chelsea was 8-0, which is ridiculous. Playing a team called Noah. So I don't think Chelsea, there's not really much to say about Chelsea. I saw the six goals at half at half time and I was just like, this is Europa Conference League. Chelsea have to win that. I'm not going to lie to you. Anything less than a Chelsea win in that Europa Conference League. And that is just an utter shambles. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we know Chelsea are too good to be in that in that cup, and yeah, if they don't win that, I, then I've just not got the words to even describe how much of a crash out that would be. Yeah, um, Manchester United, man. I was watching United. Amad Diallo, man. He's 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 got his he got his two goals, two very good finishes, especially the header, by the way. Um, and it's it's a funny one because. Amarin, 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 what is it? Amarin or Amarin, one of them. The new manager is obviously coming into United um, after the international break, but it's a tricky one because I was, I honestly thought Rude Van Nistelrooy was going to get his chance. And I think since he's been back, they've not been beaten. You know, they put, they, they look like they're stringing together some kind of performances. They're playing at a, at a level which is, Okay, it could just be like the new manager bounce and whatever, but it's going to be interesting to see if Ruud van Nistelrooy is part of the team, you know, moving forward. Um, because I'm not going to lie, I was one of those that thought when I saw him coming, I was like, Psh, long term, they're definitely seeing him as a successor to Ten Hag. But now, you know, is is the new manager going to bring in his own people? Is he still going to be number two? It's just going to be interesting dynamic because. He's got the persona of a manager and you know he wants to be manager because he was manager. He's won leagues in in Holland. So, yeah, I don't know. That's just the one to, to keep an eye out on. Um, but yeah, outside of that, guys, that was just a quick video for today. Um, but yeah, we're out. <laughs>